Good morning. <laughs> My name is Pastor Janice Donaldson of Everlasting Word Church. And this is the second Sunday of January. So this is my turn again to bring to you um, a, a message from the Lord. And I pray that it is uh, very encouraging to you. And I pray that um, it, it strengthens you uh, to go a little further. And so uh, I'm going to open up in prayer. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for being a great and mighty God that you are, Lord. You are the deliverer. You are a helper and you are the keeper, Lord God, of so many names for you, Lord God, that, uh, Lord, it, it would take time and time and time to get all those names uh, out, Lord God. But we do uh, lift up your name and, Lord God, we do exalt your name for you are worthy. Uh, to be praised. And Lord, I pray that I decrease, that you increase, that your message will go forth, Lord God, that it does not return void, but it goes out to accomplish what you're sending it out to do, and that the people are greatly, greatly blessed, Lord. And so, Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So today I will uh, be talking to you from the book of <clears throat> Jonah. Excuse my my throat is is very dry, um, but from the book of Jonah uh, chapter two, and my topic today is help is on the way. Help is on the way, and so <clears throat> we know that uh, this is a, a old story. Uh, when you get to talking about Jonah, it's one that everybody looks at. Some people uh, doubt that that even happened. It sounds so, you know, untrue. Uh, this big fish, they would say it was a big fish that uh, uh, that swallowed Jonah, some say a whale, and, you know, and, and took him into the deep of the water and then brought him back up and spit him on land. But I believe all the word of God is true and that this story also is true. It has a very significant message uh, to us um, to encourage us and to strengthen us. And um, just looking at the compassion of God, um, the love of God towards his people. And when God sent us on assignment, he expects for us to uh, complete that assignment. That there's uh, nowhere we can go and uh, be out from under the eye of God. Uh, he sees us at all times. So, uh, But Jonah had to find this out for himself. And uh, we as human beings, a lot of times we hear the stories of uh, that God has done and all of that. And and we may say we believe it, but uh, not really taking it to heart. But when we get in that situation, when it becomes our time, uh, our turn uh, to uh, go through that hardship or go through that pain, uh, now we begin to um, really believe and um, call on the name of God. And so uh, we, we begin to learn that he is, he is real. He is serious about the things that he uh, calls, us to, calls, calls us to do. When he get ready to send us out, when he call your name and he give you an assignment, he expects for you to do that assignment because um, he want to show himself strong to whoever it is that you need to go to. Um, he want other people to know who he is, not just a, that selected few. He want many to know him and maybe they will come to him. But if not, uh, they are without excuse because our God is a mighty God and he shows himself uh, to people. He doesn't keep himself in a bubble, and there's no reason for him to keep himself in a bubble. I mean, he created everything that is. Uh, he doesn't ha He doesn't need to hide from anything. Uh, there's no reason why uh, all mankind should not know him and understand that he is the true and only God. And then they can get away from their idols. They can get away from their uh, uh, good luck charms and uh, trinkets and things of that nation, uh, nature and potions that they mix up and little sayings that they have to say before they do things and the throwing the salt you know, over the shoulder for good luck 
and all of that foolishness, um, people can be delivered because he wants to show himself uh, to every people group, every culture, every nation, every tongue. Um, he wants to make himself known to these people. So he'll send out the ones that already know him uh, to take a message um, of truth to a people. And so this is a, a assignment that Jonah had. And so uh, he was to go and, and tell the people that, uh, you know, God is getting ready to um, bring destruction in your area because of the wickedness that has been going on. And, um, and so he gives them warning, and that is the love of our God and the, the compassion that he shows us. He doesn't just come out of nowhere and then it's, it's done. Uh, it's usually a message. It's usually, um, maybe it could have been even more kindness had been poured out, just uh, hoping that you would just turn and notice, you know, all this kindness, all this love, all this mercy. Uh, I, I keep uh, uh, um, um, uh, being delivered it from this and that because, you know, it's just the love of God. It's just that compassion of God. And, uh, you know, this should have happened to me, but it didn't. And so a lot of times people begin to wake up when they see that, you know what, it, 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 some people say, I'm just so lucky. But they're noticing something about their lives. No, it's not the luck. It's, it's the mercy of God. And so he's giving you a chance and he is um, uh, being merciful to you. And so hoping that you would turn around and acknowledge that, you know, um, that there's somebody watching over me. There's someone that, that's, that's with me. I, I, I keep escaping things of danger, uh, but there's a reason for that. And so um, if you've been in that situation and you have not given yourself to the Lord, then this is the time because the Lord has been merciful to you. And uh, you need to seek him and to find out what it is that God wants to do with you. And first of all, receive him as your Lord and Savior. And this is what he wants. He wants to save these people. He, there's uh, over 120,000 people living in Nineveh. And God doesn't want to come and bring the destruction and kill all these souls um, that he has created. He wants these uh, pagan people, um, these heathens, he wants them to know uh, who he is. And so he he's uh, sending out a prophet, uh, the prophet Jonah, and Jonah's to go out there and to tell the people, you know, you need to repent. You need to get right uh, because God has a plan. You, you're you not going to continue to live in that lifestyle. You're not going to be able to continue uh, to do the wickedness and the evil you've been doing, all the lying and everything you've been doing, it's going to come to an end. It's piling up, it's piling up. It is a, a, a stench in the Lord's nostrils, and um, he is going to move. And whether you are his people or not his people, we all, uh, the earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord. And so uh, you're going to answer for that. A lot of the laws of the Lord is for the just and for the unjust, just as his uh, um, grace that he gives us every day, uh, the sunshine, the water, the crops for food, the shelter, the lumber and all this other stuff. It's not just the, uh, the saints that have that or can get that. It's the world, the people of the world. He supplied that. He supplied the needs of people. And he want people all around the world to know who he is. And so uh, Jonah, uh, this uh, prophet of God, and there are still prophets today uh, that, that are prejudiced in heart. Um, you know, when uh, the election was going forth and I would look at YouTube and, you know, just going through, seeing what some of the prophets had to say. And they were prophesying and prophesying and just prophesying who was going to be. It was going to be uh, 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 Trump was going to win this election again. And they just, uh, and and so uh, uh, some prophets can have that prejudice uh, in the heart. And so what they're saying is not right because God is not able to filter through that. So now they're prophesying emotions and not prophesying truth. 
And Jonah was a prophet that would, he did not, he didn't want to prophesy to the people. He wanted the destruction to come. He wanted them to keep doing what they were doing. People could be looking at a, a group of people. Yeah, just keep acting a fool. Your day is coming. Your time is coming. But instead of, uh, of taking a word uh, um, and saying that, you know, you need to change your life. Uh, you need to, you know, uh, start getting right. You need to not talk to your parents in such a, a evil and wicked way. You should uh, do for your children. You should uh, take care of your children, take care of your family, you, take care of your mother, uh, you know, do the things that are right. Because if not, you're going to answer for that. He did, Lord didn't just put us on this earth and go say, you know what, y'all can just act a fool, do what you want to do. Yes, he gave us a free uh, uh, freedom to choose, but you are going to be accountable for those actions because he also provided for you to live uh, a, a, a right life, a good life. And so um, uh, Jonah was just, he was just, you know, reluctant. He did not want to go and take that. The, these blessings should just be for us. The, these blessings should just be for the Hebrew. You know, Jonah is the is the first Hebrew prophet to go to a pagan uh, uh, nation uh, uh, to prophesy. Usually God is sending his word to his people, his own people, you know, the people that are called by his name. He's uh, sending, uh, he usually send out a prophet or a word uh, to them. But this is going out to a uh, 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 a group of people and they just are cutting up and you know even lot lot living in the land of sodom and gomorrah and uh, the angels came to destroy um you can't just live any kind of way that you want and think that there are no consequences and so um this is the, like i said the topic is help is on the way um Help uh, came uh, was needed for Jonah as he was in the uh, belly of the big fish, the great fish, and um, Nineveh. Uh, these people needed uh, they needed that word. They needed that word, and as uh, even though I'm just studying, uh, bringing the word from chapter two, but in three and four is um, Jonah goes and talks to the people you see that the people's heart was turned. You know, you don't know how God, how people are going to receive that message that God gives you. But that is the help that God is sending to them. That word that God has given you is that help that those people need, that that person need, that message uh, that they need. And, you know, it's up to them what they do with it. It's up to them to uh, what they do with it. And, and and especially if God is tugging on your heart to make that phone call or to write that letter, to send that text out, to send that email out, send that pamphlet out, uh, get in contact with uh, people with, with, the, with the, the good news or that message that God is trying to reach them. You don't want to take part in and uh, be a part of that destruction that, that come upon them. Because you did not uh, do what you were supposed to do. I think it's in Ezekiel where it said the, the blood can be on your hand. You know, because you did not tell. You did not do. But if you do tell and you do do what you're supposed to do that God wants you to do, that blood is not on your hand if they don't do it. It's on their own. It's on their own head. Amen. Amen. So Jonah... Uh, uh, chapter two, uh, he is a, uh, he is a character. So verse one, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, because he done went through chapter one. He went through all the, the trouble of going into another direction. And you would think that being a prophet, you would know that God is all knowing. You're a prophet. You take messages. You preach the word of God. And so you yourself should know that God is all-knowing. He's omnipresent. Um, you know, he's all-powerful. And so um, in chapter 1, you know, he doesn't want to go to Nineveh. So um, he get a ticket 
He and, and then he, he aboards a ship and he goes in a total a different uh, direction, thinking he is getting away from the Lord. Uh, so many people think they're getting away from the Lord, that they're running away from the Lord. Uh, some people, uh, they step into the kingdom of God. Um, and as soon as a hardship or something comes, something they don't like or whatever about, uh, being a child of God, they, they, uh, jump ship. They don't want to do it. They don't want to be a part of it anymore. They, um, I think they are running away from the Lord and they're not running away from the Lord. But what they are is that they are in diso they are being disobedient. And so, um, and they're making it to where God will end up dealing with them. And, you know, when he does deal with them, they know too. They know too. A lot of times that's when their, their prayer come back. Uh, that's when a lot of them are drawn back into the house of the Lord. Uh, hardship uh, uh, something like that happens in their life and so uh, uh, as he was on this ship uh, this cargo the waters and everything got really really rough the situation that uh, was around the people on this on this ship it, the water the wind picked up it was uh, very turbulent and everything it was very bad and so um, Jonah was telling them because he had told them before that he was running from God. I don't know how people, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, he was just being honest. He was just being honest with these people who were not God's people. And he was telling them that I'm running away from God. And, uh, but he did still didn't want to take a message to a group of people that, um, they weren't uh, of God's people, you know? So uh, this, this, this prophet, and we have a lot of people, um, prophets that have racism in their heart, in their, you know, um, and then you have, you know, in the New Testament, it begins to talk about false prophets, you know, uh, antichrist and all of this. So you have all these people that um, you, you would think that they know uh, uh, truth. And they they preach, they teach, and um, it, it, it is not the truth. It is not the truth. And so Jonah um, he gets in the uh, gets on board the ship with them. Everything gets rough. It gets bad. And um, they begin to pray. And then they ask, uh, uh, well, you know, Jonah, you need to wake up and pray to your God uh, because of uh, what all is going on. And as I'm thinking about that, a lot of times <clears throat> other people may have to point out as you're in this situation, as people have ran from the Lord and other people began to tell them, well, you know, maybe you just need to get right with God. That message do come forth. You know, you need to get up and pray, pray to your God. We're going to all pray to our God. And John said, well, that's because of me. It's because of me that you're going through. It's because of me that my household is going through. It's because of me and and the things I've done, you know. And in the um, uh, Psalms, uh, Proverbs, I'm sorry, it began to talk about how uh, evil uh, um, never leaves the house of the wicked, uh, unrighteousness. Their house is not blessed because of the things that's going on. And so what, what Jonah was doing he brought these people in to lose uh, their possessions. Uh, you know, they probably had cargo on there, goods on there that they were going to sell once they got to the next port or whatever it is. They done lost money uh, uh, dealing with Jonah. You know, people that come in, coming in contact with Jonah, they going through hardships and everything because God is trying to get Jonah's uh, attention, and which is still showing the compassion of God towards Jonah. And the, and the love of God towards Jonah. Because he could have had, instead of them throwing things off the ship, the whole thing could have been consumed. Because the waves had started picking up and the wind was blowing so hard that that, that ship could have went under. You know, if it wasn't for the love of God, we would all be consumed. We would all be consumed. Amen. Okay, so in, in chapter 2, verse 1... It says, from inside the fish, 
Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. It doesn't matter where you are. You can pray. You don't have to get in and bring your beads out and begin to pray or your cloth out and begin to pray or set the mat down and begin to pray in the direction of the east or the west and all this other stuff. Um, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Jonah knew what he needed to do. <laughs> we know what it is we need to do. We know when we are, uh, 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 the, our, we know our shortcomings. And we know how to get back there. When push comes to shove, we know how to get back right in line with the Lord. In verse 2, he said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to me, to my cry. I'm sure Jonah right now is in amazement and, 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 and uh, not an amazement in, in a good way. Just just the fear, the dread that uh, is up on him, that he's in the belly of uh, a fish and, um, and the distress and everything, the fear, the fear of being inside uh, of, of a fish. One study I, I was looking at and it was saying that it had to be, it, it couldn't have been a fish or whatever because of the way the mouth of the fish and all this other stuff uh, for, uh, for a man to be in the fish and all of that. Um, it doesn't say what, uh, what type of fish. There are uh, animals that are still being discovered today. You know, um, in the water and, and, and on the land and the Amazons and things like that. We don't have all the answers. So be careful when you're looking at, you know, then it's like, okay, I got to close that up. I, you know, put that away because you cannot put a limit to me uh, on my God, on his creation because he, he created it all. And so if it says that he, he went into a fish, he went into a fish. How big that fish, what kind of fish? I, I don't know. It didn't say, you know. We got some fishes that can all, you know, they, they can last up on the land a long time. Some of them, they, they uh, have one called a walking catfish, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, there's no limits with my God. And so uh, in his distress, he called to the Lord. That's, that's a perfect time to call to the Lord, right? In the distress, when you are distressed, when you are, uh, I mean, this is it. You know, you're looking at that uh, death is coming my way. Death is, is calling my name. Uh, this is, you know, that he could pray, that he had still had soundness of mind, that he could pray. And he said, and he answered me. He answered me. But don't be surprised when God answers you. Yes, we, we, we give him praise for the answers. We, we worship him because he does answer us. But when you pray, aren't you expecting him to answer? When you, when you are, are seeking him, aren't you expecting the creator of all to answer you? Who else has the answers? No one but him. So when I go to him, I am expecting him to answer me. And you should expect to get an answer. Don't just pray and get up and go. If you're asking him, if you're seeking him about something, uh, listen. You've got to listen. Amen. And God can't speak to you while you're moving around too. I have experienced that. He, but he will answer. He will answer. And from deep in the rim of the dead, <laughs> it, from it, from the rim of the dead, I'm as good as dead. I'm, I, I know I'm not going to make it through this. Maybe Jonah is saying to himself, to himself because he's in the rim of the dead. I mean, he, maybe he's thinking I'm too far down in this water uh, to be able to live. You know, and and but you listen to me. You listen to me when I call for help. You hurled me into the depths. You know, into the very heart of the seas. I'm in the middle of this thing. It's, it's, uh, I'm down deep. And the currents swell about me, swirl about me. All your waves and breakers, they're sweeping over me. 
I'm I'm in this fish and all this is going on. This the, the water and things are, are moving and and uh this fish is going down deeper into the water. He's going down and he it's not like he just floated on the top. This fish took uh Jonah down to the depths. Your situation may look like it's dragging you down to the depths. But God is saying still help is on the way. I can still reach you. I can still draw you out. I can still deliver you. My hand is not too short. I don't care how far deep down you are uh uh in in the uh in the sea. You know, Jonah saying I, I'm in the realm of the dead. But God is saying it doesn't matter how far you think you are. How far away you think you are from me. I can still draw you back. You're you're mine. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I I said, Jonah said, I said, I have been banished from your sight. You know that this 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 is it. This is the end. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. In the Old Testament, if you stay too far away from the temple, if you stay so far away from the temple that you can't get there when they had their, uh, you know, times of prayer and, and different things, then you can turn towards the east. You could position yourself. That would be counted as prayer. You could turn towards the east in that direction and begin to pray. And it, it would be counted. It, it, you know, it would be accepted. And so, um, this is what he says, I, I will look again towards your holy temple. You know, I'm, 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 I'm getting in that position. I'm, I'm seeking you. Now, um, we're not seeing anywhere with, uh, where he is saying, Lord, forgive me for not going uh, to Nineveh. Lord, you know, we're not, not seeing that in there. He's looking at his situation right now. And he's, he's looking at it, everything is over. But I, you know, I'm going to look again towards the temple. I'm going to pray. And he says, the engulfing waters uh, threaten me. The, you know, my situation, it, 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 it's not stopping. You know, he in this water, it ain't like it's dry, it, 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 he's getting dried out or anything like that. No, he's totally, he, he is the, uh, surrounded. He said, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Look at where I am. You know? Seaweed wrapped around my head. In the book of Esther, before she went to the king, she, I mean, in all her linens and, and beautiful colors and uh, being the queen, uh, before she uh, went to the king, she had to get down on her face. Look where she's at. And she had to petition the Lord. She had to seek the Lord in her fasting. And her, uh, uh, her uncle, what did he do? Throwing dirt up on him. Dust up on him and falling. Falling dust up on him. Uh, seeking the Lord. Seeking the Lord. Getting in that position of prayer. Uh, uh, that The attitude. And Lord, this is how drastic... Uh, I need you. This is this is how uh, you know I'm going. I'm taking drastic measures, trying to get your attention because I need you. I, I, this situation, I need you ASAP, Lord God. And so um, sometimes our, our situation, we have to drop everything, and we have to get in position. He said, "I'm going to look again towards the temple." He's going to position himself one more time. I don't know how he could do that inside the, 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 this animal that he's in. But he's going to position himself. And he, like, Lord, I think this is the direction that the temple's in. And, and he, he's going to pray. And he's going to pray with all his heart, all his might, all his strength. You know? Because I, I'm down here in the realm of the dead. They've given me a report, you know, that uh, I might not pull through <laughs> this illness. You know, they've given me uh, uh, only hours to live. So I, I'm going to push, I'm going to uh, position myself. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray again. You know, where I was running away from the Lord, now I'm going to turn and I'm going to uh, seek the Lord. Mm. 
He said, even the seaweed was wrapped around my head. That, that, you know, it's like it's always something that that last little thing that come in and say, you know what, it's done. You know, you're going to be evicted. Yeah, this is going to happen to you. That's going to happen. It, it's got to look at it. Look at, look at it. Look at all the evidence that is against me, you know. And he said, to the roots of the mountains I sank. <laughs> He's down at the root of the mountains. And you know, uh, to be in the seas and, and you at the root of the mountains and these are water, the mountain tops and stuff are all covered up. But you're down, you're down at the bottom. <laughs> he said, to the roots of the mountains, I sank down. The earth beneath, beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord, my God, brought my life up from the pit. You know what? I know, Lord, that you're able. I know you're able to change uh, my situation, my circumstances. I, I know, Lord God, that um, you'll never leave me, not forsake me. I know that there is some kind of help on the way that you're going to uh, deliver me. You're the only one that can bring me up. You you brought my life up from the from the pit. So I know you're going to do something in this situation. And say the earth beneath barred me in. It's, you know, I'm, I'm down at the roots. I'm down at the bottom. Lord, what am I to do? And if you're saying that today, if you're in a situation and you're thinking, Lord, what am I to do? I want you to know the help is on the way. I want you to know in your spirit, in your mind, in your heart, that help is on the way. That you turn to God and you ask God, God, help me in this situation. Lord, get me out of this pit. It may not be nothing looking like what uh, Jonah uh, uh, is in. Jonah's in a situation of, uh, of disobedience. But Lord is steady showing uh, uh, Jonah, I can let you go down all the way. You can hit rock bottom, but I'm still able to draw you out. I'm still able to lift you up with my right hand. It is claimed that the right hand of God is the powerful hand of God, uh, the deliverance hand of God and we know that our God he can speak he doesn't even have to use his hand he doesn't even have to look your way he doesn't even have to point they all he have to do is say the word as as uh, uh the centurion told if you just speak the word you don't have to come to my house just speak the word and I'm speaking the word uh to you uh from the Lord help is on the way that your situation is going to change. And even as I'm speaking, even as you're hearing, even as you're receiving, it's changing already. It is changing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Lord, God, you brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, when I was having fever and fever and the temperature going up, when, when, when it looks like my child was, was going to be taken away, it looked like this was going to happen, the suffering that I was going through, the pain that I was going through, I remembered you. Now, <laughs> Jonah said, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you. To your holy temple. Faith is now a coming alive. I remember. I remember. I remember the goodness of God. I remember the power of God's hand. I remember the love of God. I remember. I remember. God gave me words to take to other people. Uh, uh, Jonah may be saying to himself. And you did this. I remember you, you told me to do it. Remember Jonah was a prophet. He was a prophet. So he preached. And he saw God do things. He knew that God is able to do things. So now he remembers. Let's get it right. Jonah's getting back on track. 
Not that he just prayed, but now he's getting on track. And when you start getting on track, faith start rising. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Now he remembers you, Lord. And my prayer rose to your holy temple. So it rose to you, to your holy temple, right where you reside, Lord. It rose. He's in the deep. You know, down at the the the, the rocks, uh, the the foundation of the seas, that the, the rocks are there. He's seeing rocks in the foundation of the sea, and uh, now he said, "I remember." And my prayer uh, rose to you, Lord, to your temple, to your holy temple, and then he began to say, "Those who cling to worthless." Worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Oh, uh, uh, really, Jonah? Those who cling to the worthless, idol, worthless idols are things that can't do anything. They can't talk. They can't do anything. And they were made by man's hand. You know? They were made by man's hands. And so, uh, and he says they're worthless. They, they can't do anything. Amen? <laughs> Those people... They turn away from God's love. When you begin to pick up an idol, you have turned away from the love of God. Because now you, you're you honoring this thing. You, you're, you're looking to that. You're honoring that that whatever it is that, that, that you have and that you turn to, whether it's a drink or whether it's a smoke or whatever it is that you turn to when your sorrows come instead of turning to the Lord. And you know, the things usually that you turn to in your sorrows, you turn to in your joy. <laughs> when you're happy and everything, what do you do? I got to have the drink. I got, I, I, you know, I got to have the smoke. It's your celebration thing. It's the thing you, you turn to when you're, you're uh, hurting and, and, and your mind is all out of whack and your emotions, are, you know, torn apart. That's what you turn to. And you use it that time and you also, when you're up on, you know, you got that promotion, you got that, that, that bonus and all that, uh, you know, the happiness is there and you turn to that thing too. So that is your God. You, you, you know, through the day, you got to do it. That's your God. You know, you got it in a special place. You treat it special. Don't touch that. You know, don't nobody go by that. Yeah. That's your special thing. But the Lord, we turn to him when we have sorrows and pain. We turn to him when we have joy and jubilation. Uh, we turn to him uh, when we don't have anything. We turn to him when we have everything. Uh, when we're not at peace and when we have peace. Why? Because he's my God. He is my everything. So if you don't have him, then you got something that's worthless. You know, it is not going to speak to you. It's not going to lift your spirit. All you do is you go and talk to it. You go and talk to it. And then try to figure out how you're going to handle the situation. All right. Mm-hmm. Verse 9. But I will shout a grateful praise. Will sacrifice to you. He's making this vow. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will make good, Lord. You know, I will say salvation comes from. I am gonna speak what it is you want me to speak. I am gonna do what it is you want me to do, Lord. You want to go to? You want me to go to these people? I am going to tell these people salvation comes from the Lord. You want to be saved? Salvation comes from the Lord. You, you People, y'all need to get right because salvation comes to, from the Lord. This is what he, uh, he he's going to tell the people. I like that. But he said, I, I, with shouts of grateful praise. Shouts of grateful praise. I am going to worship you. I have tasted I see that the Lord is good. I've been preaching and preaching and preaching, but I've gone through something personally myself, and I am going to, uh, with shouts of grateful praise. And remember, he's a preacher. 
and will sacrifice to you. I'm going to do right. Lord, I'm going to give. I'm, I'm going to, whatever it is I, that I'm supposed to do, I'm going to do it. And what I have vowed, I will make good, <laughs> Lord God. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish. That's what God wanted to hear. That's what God wanted to hear. And the Lord commanded the fish. The Lord is in his temple. The fish is in the, the, the very, very deep. And it vomited Jonah onto dry ground. He came up and he uh, vomited Jonah up onto dry, dry ground, dry land. God changed Jonah's uh, situation where he was in the water. Now he's on the land. He's and he's on, and he didn't just put him right there, you know, at, at, at the at the line, at the boundary line line of the water, at the beach there in the mud. No, unto the dry land. And he put him up there. Let's get started with what you're supposed to do, John. I brought you back, and Lord has given us. If you're able to hear this, God has given us chance after chance after chance, and now it's time to do what we have vowed. And if you haven't vowed anything, it's time to do good. It's time to do good. You know? And why? It's not because of our salvation. We do good to say, thank you, Lord. You've been so good. And I want somebody else to know you. This bread that you've given me uh, to eat and to live off of, it is so good that I want to share this bread uh, with others because man you know doesn't live on bread alone but on every word i want to share this word with others that's what that bread is and it and, and tell them about jesus i know at, at our church a lot of churches <clears throat> don't have test they don't do testimonies like they used to um you know and everything but we in our worship service we also have a testimony and um we may hear sometime when uh people are saying that they're going through this and they're going through that and you know pray for me and then they come back again and that testimony is so powerful because god answered it and god has done great things for them and when they share that 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 bread, when they share that good news, that that uh, report, we all celebrate with them. And so, and then we get a chance to hear that God is able. That's what some people need to hear today, and I really feel that deep in my spirit. God is able to help you in your situation. God, I mean, if you know somebody that is going, going through something and it seems like there's no hope, share this message with them. That the, the help is on the way and that God is able. Some people don't think that God is able. Some people don't think that they are worthy for God to step in this situation because they, they don't know enough about him. They don't think that they're worthy. They've always been told that, you know, that uh, negative things to them and uh, all their life. And so really, why would God um, want to help me? Why would God want to do something for me? God created you. The other people who ever been telling you things all your life, negative thing, they, they didn't create you. God said, I knit you together in your mother's womb. They didn't. And he knows all about you. They don't. They're speaking things into you. And you may react into the manner in which it has been spoken unto you. But that's not who you are. That is not who you are. So somebody uh, you need to know God is able. If he brought this man up out of the out of the belly of a fish of a great fish and vomit him up on the land what he there's nothing that he can't do to help you we know he can touch animals we know he can touch uh, uh the weather he spoke to the winds uh uh you know that there was blowing and there was storming and and he spoke to the winds be still 
and everything calm down. He's in control of everything. If your life is totally out of control, I'm speaking to you. Sit down right now and seek the Lord. Stop it. Stop what it is you're into. Stop what it is you've been doing and seek the Lord. Ask him to help you. Ask him to in, intervene in, into this situation. To step into your situation. Step into your heart. And tell him, Lord, I've been trying to handle things all my life and I can't do it anymore. That is not the time for you to try and take your life. That's because you trying to do it. No, let the creator, the one who created you. Let him guide you. Let him direct you. Let him bring uh, uh, godly people into your life. Begin to lift you up out of that pit. Begin to lift you up out of the rim of the dead. Lift you up out of darkness. Begin to turn your life around. Begin to help you. That's what he wants to do. Lord, the Lord wants to help you for he is able. He is able. This is, uh, uh, I want to read this one um, to you. It's uh, Psalms uh, 30. Psalms 30. I think I get my Bible on this. Sorry. <laughs> Psalms 30. Hallelujah. It's almost um, uh, saying the same thing that Jonah was saying in Psalms 30. And he says here, and I'm reading from the NIV. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. See, help is on the way. <laughs> help is on the way. God wants to heal you. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, <laughs> but his favor lasts a lifetime. I think Jonah got a chance to feel that by going into the uh, the fish swallowing him and taking him down to the deep. The Lord's anger only lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. A weeping may remain for the night. For a night, but the rejoicing comes in the morning. The refreshing come in. The pouring in of the oil and the wine, it begins to begin to build you up. Symbolic of the spirit beginning to lift you up and bringing you joy. When I felt secure, I said, I would never be shaken. You know, you think, you know, uh, uh, nothing can happen to you, but oh Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. I was secure in this, in this thing, but when you hid my face, I didn't, when you hit your face, Lord, I didn't know what was going on. I was dismayed. Seemed like trouble was happening. Literally seemed like things was just getting out, out of hand, out of control. And to you, Lord, oh Lord, I call to the Lord. I cry for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction, Lord? Huh? Lord God, what, what are you going to get out of my life if you destroy me? If you let me be destroyed in my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you, Lord? And we know God is able to make anything praise him. <laughs> Will it proclaim your faithfulness? This is what I can do. I can pro pro uh, proclaim uh, your faithfulness, Lord, and I can uh, uh, praise you and I can worship you and I can lift your name up and I can go and tell others about the goodness of my God and the love of God and, and the joy that fills my soul. In verse 10, it says, hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. When you're asking for the Lord's mercy, it's like you're saying, God, don't give me what I deserve. Don't give me the harsh treatment that I deserve. Give me mercy. Be lenient with me. That's why I didn't say the mercy of the court. <laughs> you know, there is a decision, a judgment that is there. 
A judgment says that you should be punished. You should be beaten. You should be this or that. But mercy is saying, no, not at this time. No, mercy is stepping in. No, we're not going to give him the full sentence. The mercy of the court is going to give you one week. Uh, to do your uh, 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 time in jail. The mercy of the court is just going to see you to do a uh, one year instead of a life in prison. The mercy. Seek the mercy of the Lord. Lord, I know I have not been right. I know I've did this and that, but I am seeking the mercy of the Lord. Let not your judgment be upon me. Lord, don't judge me in your anger. Don't judge me, Lord God, in that. Hallelujah. Lord, mercy. Give me the mercy of the court. Give me the mercy of the Lord. <laughs> oh, he said, and, and, and be merciful to me, O Lord. Be my help. Help me, Lord, in this. Help me. Don't punish me, Lord. Don't treat me like that, Lord. But help me. Be merciful unto me. You turn my welling into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and you clothe me with joy. Now, Lord, now, Lord, I get up from that prayer. I get up from that prayer. Now I can praise you. Now I, I can sing. Now I can dance. I can, I can worship you, Lord God. Because now you have clothed me with joy. Something changed. Something changed. I can feel that it's the, something has lifted off of me. That heaviness has lifted. That weight that has lifted. That burden has lifted. That yoke that was upon me is broken. Mm. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. Now you have given me a song. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Amen. I want you to know today that help is on the way. Your situation is going to change. Where it's all seem like you're drowning, I'm telling you, you're going to be standing on dry land. The Israelites thought that they were going to drown in the Red Sea. They really did. They saw that water and they were like, oh, the Egyptians got us now. And the Lord said, you know what? Help is on the way. <laughs> help is on the way. Raise your hand up, Moses. Uh, raise that staff up. And the, and that uh, water the, uh, parted. It parted. And they, woke, they walked across on what? On dry land. Because what? The help is on the way. The help was right there. So I pray that you receive uh, this message today. Um, it, 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 it's, it was a blessing. Jonah chapter 2. I encourage you to go back and read the whole story about Jonah. Uh, look at this uh, prophet who goes around preaching. And, but um, he uh, ended up in distress himself. He ended up in his disobedience. <laughs> you know. And uh, he needed God himself. So none of us are above our, our soul to the point that... Um, we don't need God. And never think that you can run and hide from God. If he had a call in on your life when you were little, it's still there. It's still there. It's just been the mercy of God. And um, you need to turn around. I'll tell you, it's nothing like serving the Lord. Um, he's a good God. He is a good God. And he does answer, answer prayer. You need to know that he answers prayer. If you are praying, he, he will answer that prayer. And so, uh, if you are not, um, if you have not done the sinner's prayer, I will lead you right now. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I give you full authority of my life. Forgive me of all my sins and my trespasses. All those wrongdoings of thoughts and things that I've did, things that I've said. Lord, forgive me. Now, Lord. Make me one of your own, and Lord God, teach me and help me to be pleasing to you. And I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you because you shed your blood on the cross to make it possible for me to be a child of God, for me to be called 
a Christian. And so, Lord, I thank you. I know it's not by anything that I can do. I can't work enough of good deeds. I can't give enough money to missions or, or salvation armies or, or groups like that to help the poor or the needy. I can't make uh, points like that with you. The only way that I can get to heaven is by your blood that was shed for me. And I thank you. So, Lord God, be my Lord and be my Savior. Give me a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And don't let me go. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I know that was quite a bit in there. But ask God to be your Lord and Savior. Believe it in your heart. And it's not because of anything that you have done or that you can do. He did it all. And he did it because he knew you wouldn't be able to do it. You're not holy <laughs> or, or pure or, or, or anything like that. And uh, God sent his son uh, to die for us. And so that where he is, that we can be also. And that's why. Amen. Because of his shed blood. Have a great day. Be blessed. Help is on the way. Remember, God sees all. He knows all. And he's all powerful. So you can't run from God. Whatever you do, there's a time you'll have to answer for it. But you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and meet it in your heart and your mind. And love the Lord. Uh, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Have a great day.